Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Every Wednesday, Mark and Kim, along with their special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark and Kim will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark and Kim are tested, certified, and professional spiritual mediums, metaphysical teachers, healers, and spiritual advisors with their own individual spiritual practices in Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California. You are the inspired and the inspiration. And good afternoon, inspired listeners. Thank you for being with us today. Happy Wednesday. We have a great show ahead of us with a very special guest as we talk about confronting our negative thoughts. Oh, so very important. As we all know, everything starts with our thinking and our thoughts. But first, I'm Kim Thalkin, founder of Love First, where life transformations happen in the beautiful Encino, California. You can find me at lovefirst.info. And certainly, if there's anything that I can do to help support you on your path in the way of readings, healings, or hypnotherapy, or spiritual development, please let me know. I am always honored to work with uh, my clients. And also, I want to remind you to check my website, too, for upcoming classes. I think I mentioned this last week, but um, I'm going to be doing an angel communication class uh, in the spring. And also, Mark and I are going to be preparing a weekend workshop here in Los Angeles as well, which I'm so excited about. But with that said, I would love to introduce my co-host, Mark Elaine Hart, the Intuitive Prospector up in Seattle, Washington. Mark, happy Hello. Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, my friend. Hello, inspired listeners. Thanks for tuning in to what Kim and I like to call Wisdom Wednesday. Uh, it's a... Now the weather up here is a little rainy up here in Seattle, but it's actually warmer than normal. So I'm um, going to take this opportunity to get outside after the show and maybe do a little uh, walk-in. But um, yeah. it's February. If you can believe that, the time is just uh, cruising on by. And if you want to check out the work that I'm doing up here in the Pacific Northwest in Seattle, Washington, uh, please head over to marklanehart.com or you can uh, internet search The Intuitive Prospector. I'd love to work with you in spiritual uh, mentoring, development. We have a lot of workshops, spiritual hikes. We have a lot of fun, or what I like to say, spiritual prospecting for your spiritual gold. And uh, we have our first uh, or my second workshop coming up here in Feb on February 20th uh, up in Arlington, Washington. We're going to be holding a workshop called Spiritual Borders. And it's really to help you on your spiritual path without any borders. So we're going to be looking at meditation, uh, spiritual connection, attunement and, and energy management, spiritual healing, uh, spiritual inspiration uh, exercises, spiritual trance, and then also the ability to do a little bit of mediumship demonstration in front of the group. So uh, you can check that out over on my uh, website as well. So Kim, how is your day going? My day is going beautiful, Mark. Thank and you for asking. It's sunny here. It's a little chilly out, but it's a beautiful day. And I can't tell you how much I look forward to, you know, every Wednesdays when we do our show. It's just a lot of fun. And, you know, I, our guests bring so much knowledge, mm -hmm. um, you know, to the hour that I really enjoy learning from them. Yeah, and that's why I was asking how you're doing because, again, you talked about the thoughts, meditation, and that's what today's show is going to be all about is, you know, because our thoughts become our words and our words become our actions and our actions become our behavior and our behavior becomes our destiny. And so this this guest today is going to be uh, very fun, insightful, and looking forward to bringing her uh, on very shortly. But before we do that, Kim, let me get into our inspired uh, living positive affirmation for the month of February. We'll, we'll be saying this all throughout the month of February. And what that is, is all that I need comes to me at the right time and place in this life. I'll say it one more time. 
All that I need comes to me at the right time and place in this life. And if you want to interact with the show right now, head on over to Inspired Living Radio on Facebook. You can also uh, post your questions there or on our Twitter account at Inspired For Us. That's Inspired, the number four, us. We're also on Instagram and Google Plus communities under Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. If you do miss the live show, you can head over to uh, a few of the outlets that we uh, our encore shows will be playing. Uh, you can head over to Ohm Times Radio Archives and just click on the Inspired Living uh, icon, and you can catch all of our past shows, all f- uh, from last year into 2015 up until today's date. Uh, you can also head over to SoundCloud, Podbean, YouTube, or you can go to MarkLaneHart.com where I have my favorite shows that we've done in the last year uh, listed in the library. And uh, Kim, one last thing, I am excited to announce, um, if you are interested in uh, partnering up with Inspired Living to be a sponsor, uh, please contact Kim or I directly. Uh, But Kim, I'm excited to announce that we have our first sponsorship opportunity and partnership coming online. Uh, We'll be announcing that next week uh, for sponsorship for Inspired Living. And we have some very cool guests coming up too. I'm excited. We can't announce them yet, but there are some great guests that are coming up for Inspired Living in 2016, so you'll want to stay tuned for that. And I'll turn that back over to you, Kim. Very good. So, um, Mark, thank you for uh, all those great updates. My goodness, we're busy, huh? <laughs> um, a lot of sure good are. stuff. Yeah, a lot of good stuff happening. And um, to that uh, point, uh, this is uh, just one of them. Our guest today, Aura Nadrich, who is a certified life coach and mindfulness meditation coach, as well as the author of Says Who? How One Simple Question Can Change the Way You Think Forever. Her teachings allow us to confront our negativity head on and address what issues are really holding us back in our lives. Wow, just really important stuff here. She began her career as a certified life coach, certified mindfulness meditation teacher. She's a professionally uh, trained in cognitive behavioral therapy. She's also in technology of change, Jungian analysis, um, Buddhism and Kabbalah. Oh, I'd like to learn a little bit more about Kabbalah. Um, or is also a licensed marriage officiant, and she's the leader of the women's group, as well as a member of the National Association of Professional Women. Aura's teachings in Says Who provides a step-by-step process of confronting our negative thoughts, providing both tangible and and practical lessons. Her students are able to address and overcome their negative thoughts and outlooks to live their lives at their highest potential. I love that. Aura, welcome to Inspire Living. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Welcome, Aura. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim and Mark. So glad to be with you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, you have such an interesting background, Aura, um, having started out in the entertainment industry and then transitioned into the work that you're doing today, which is actually, uh, funny enough, a similar path that I followed. I started in the entertainment industry as well. I know you were on the acting side. I was on the business, but look at where we are today, huh? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> no, right. right. So tell, yeah, tell us a little bit about that transition. I mean, that's a lot different, I think, than, you know, the work that you're doing today. And, and talk to us a little bit about what it is you are doing, who you're working with, and how you're uh, helping the people that you work with. Well, it is, and it's actually a very natural progression when I look back to the fact that I was always a, spe- a seeker. I was always curious, and I was very inquisitive about what's this thing called life? What are we doing here? What's this all about? So I went on a very in-depth psycho-spiritual journey rather young, and when I was an actress, I was even very much doing things related to the growth and the evolution of the spirit back then. I even started meditation while I was an actress. I became a transcendental meditator uh, while I was acting because I intuitively felt that it would be very helpful in balancing the energy that I was putting outside of myself to be able to get the time to come back and to fill the well 
if you will. So it was uh, back then that I would say I really started things. And it was many years later that I decided, since I'm so naturally inclined to want to help people, and I consider myself very empathic and very compassionate, that I decided to become a certified life coach. And today I have a, a full-on practice. I see private clients. I facilitate groups. I do public speakings. I do workshops. I teach meditation. I'm busy. And, and oh, by the way, dot, 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 have a book that just came out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are busy and I love it. And Thank I love you. that, um, you know, you, you mentioned you started your spiritual journey at an earlier, a younger age and the benefits that come with that, you know, not, yes. not, yeah, so many of us start a little later in life, but well, still it's nice. never, yeah. never too late to start anything that helps you grow and evolve and learn, you know, for anybody out there who thinks they can't jump in, you can jump in at any time in your life. Very true. That's right. It's never, it's never too late and it's never too late to create change for yourself as well. So absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so you, you do life coaching. So talk to us a little bit about the life coaching that you do and how you help people with that. I work with people. I apply the says who method, which is a questioning method that I created a very original, unique technique for questioning and challenging those negative and fear-based thoughts that oftentimes come up and are very counterproductive to us getting our goals met and this method is, is again, it's what says who is about. I work with them. I also teach them meditation for people that are either new to meditating or want to learn mindfulness meditation. I do private sessions with that as well. And so, um, and so you, I would imagine you probably do a little bit of both in, in these sessions, huh? The coaching and uh, the meditation is probably. I do. And I find that's a wonderful balance. Uh, again, for people that don't know meditation, I teach them that. And for those that do, we take time and do we meditate together. And just uh, stay with us for two minutes to our inspired listeners. We know that this is break time. We'll be back in two minutes with our guest, Nadrich. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Are you seeking answers to life questions? Would you like to connect to a departed loved one? Are you suffering from pain, stress, or anxiety? Kimberly Thalkin is a tested, certified, and professional psychic, spiritual medium, energy healer, hypnotherapist, and the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen. Love First services support, guide, and empower individuals by connecting them to their highest potential to live a healthier, joyful, and meaningful life that's filled with purpose. All services can be done by phone, Skype, or in person in Encino, California. Please visit lovefirst.info. That's L-O-V-E-F-I-R-S-T dot info for more information. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know. I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. The cutting edge of conscious radio. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And 
welcome back, Inspired listeners. You're listening to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Ohm Times Radio, the voice of consciousness. Today we have our special guest, Aura Nodrick. Uh, and we were right before we went to the break, Aura, we were talking about what an underachiever you are. You, you, you're not very busy, <laughs> not doing a lot of things, not doing you know, your coaching, your public speaking, and you wrote a book. Uh, so congratulations on that. This is, is this your first book that you've uh, written? Yes, it is. Thank it is. you, Mark. Yes. Yeah, the editing process alone is enough to have you pull your hair out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a little bit of a faded memory for me right now. Oh, good, good. I, you know, yes, it's like now that it's out and it's actualized and it's out in the world, I, you know, it's like, I don't know, you just don't think about the labor as yeah. much. It's like having given birth, really. Yeah, you can enjoy the, enjoy the fruits of your labor. I just, as, as an editor, I know the editing process and that can yes. be Yes, and not, a, to be taken, not to be taken lightly. Editing is quite an integral part of this process for sure. Yeah, especially when it's your baby, like you just said. And so yes. for all the uh, inspired listeners out there, for our audience, if you're an up and coming writer and you're you know currently writing your first book, uh, be patient with it because it is a um, you know it's a it's a process. And uh, but to get your message out there, so let's talk about your book. Uh, it says how one simple question can change the way you think forever. And I love the title says who because really it's none of our business what other people think of us, right? Absolutely, it's about what we think of us. You know, exactly. and that's the part of the, you know, the says who question is about that. So let's talk about this labor of love and how you came to write the book and what's in the book without giving too much away and where people can get this book uh, for our listening audience out there. Well, the very beginnings of says who really started with my own personal journey. And that is that I had experienced something in my life many years ago that was quite devastating. And I went into a fear state, which is a fight or flight state. And when we go into fight or flight, a lot of thoughts rush to the surface of our mind. Obviously, we were in fear. So we're like, oh, my God, and I'm not going to be okay. And, you know, all the things that we think when we're in fear. And because of what I was experiencing at that time, and it's too long of a story to go into now, you can read it about it in my book, a thought came to the surface of my mind. And I believed that thought was true. And that thought took hold in my mind and stayed whole, you know, had a grip on my mind for quite some time and caused me a lot of suffering. And I did not know that that thought was not true. It took many years of my own deep psycho-spiritual journey to find out that I believed something that was not, in fact, true. And it wasn't until years later that I became a certified life coach and started to coach my clients that I started to see similar patterns in my clients that they were holding thoughts that they had had for many years that was impeding their life in some way of reaching their goals that they believed that wasn't true like I had. And it was with one particular client who shared something in her session with me that was diametrically opposed to her proactive upward mobile trajectory that she was on, that I, that question came up and I asked her, says who, who is saying that thought in your mind? And the thought, uh, do you feel like it was something, you know, cause the, th the thoughts in, you know, on a daily basis, we have 50 to 60,000 thoughts that can go through our, our head in a day, which is a lot of thoughts. Do you feel like that thought that you started to believe in was based on maybe how you were raised, maybe something you saw on television, maybe a religious belief? Do you, do you know where that thought stemmed from and was created? I do. And you're mentioning all of those areas of which we can be prone to thinking things that are in fact not true are influenced by all the things that you just said, Mark. This particular thought originated with me and I go in the book says who the questioning process is to find out if this is your original thought or did you take someone else's thought on as your own and believed it to be true. So for my particular thought, it was born from me. And it took me, as I said, many years to come face to face with it again to realize that because my particular thought came out of a deep fear state that I had to then be willing and able to let it go, that it no longer was serving my well-being and it had to be let go. And isn't it amazing that we're the only species on earth that actually creates our own fear? And our thoughts right. and, and where it takes us. And I, I always find, you know, doing the spiritual work, like you said, you, you found yours, your path early on in life. For myself, I actually found it later in life. And, and the one uh, thing that I always find that's in common with all of us that are on the spiritual path and for our listening audience out there, it's usually through some sort of 
tragic event, uh, something that really changes that paradigm of, of the way that we see life, the way that we think. And that's the one thing I found consistent with all of us on the spiritual path is we have an awakening. And sometimes awakening can be um, difficult to go through. But once you do, it just opens you up to so many much more wonderful things. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, yes. I mean, that awakening, you know, you can take yourself to want to know the answers that can help you through the process of self-realization. Or as you mentioned, it does take something. It takes an incident, you know, perhaps an unfortunate incident or a tragedy that occurs that really forces you to make a decision. Do you want to go inward and learn from that experience and take it higher? Or do you want to deny it and push it away and just continue on in your life as if it didn't really have something? Thing to teach you. So I believe that all the things, you know, there, there's that saying that that does not kill you makes you stronger. Mm-hmm. I think that everything we encounter is uh, to help us grow. And that's what we're doing is that we need to learn and grow. And this is what it's about. Yeah. The saying that I like to say, you know, being a former uh, Coastie, uh, is a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. So you know, <laughs> right. it's, it's the same concept. And um, Kim, go ahead. I was just going to ask where you mentioned something which I thought was really interesting is, you know, we've got two choices. We can either, um, you know, look at what's happened with us in the past and work through that or we can pretend like it never happened and move forward. What have you seen um, for people who choose the second, uh, not wanting to go back and understand that, just pretend like it never happened and move forward? What do you see as the outcome with that? Well, that, Kim, is very related to what says who is about the says who method, because what I say is those negative thoughts, those fear-based thoughts are trying to tell you something. They have something to tell you. That's why they're creating the symptoms or the side effects that they are. That's what's creating anxiety. That's what's creating heartache. That's what's creating dis-ease. And you can choose to pay attention to what they want to tell you to help you through the healing process that you can benefit from. Or you can turn away, and I think sometimes it gets so severe and so extreme that it, you know, people do find themselves very unhealthy or in, you know, disease, unfortunately, that helps them possibly, hopefully, to wake up. So the questioning method is that it's to pay attention to those negative and fear-based thoughts when they come up and allow them to come up. And that's what the questioning process is. It's a questioning process to have you be able to question them, to know if they're real or they're not, or they're, if they're thoughts that are serving your well-being or they're not. And, or if it's your original thought or it's not. You know, how would you know unless you question, unless there's an investigation, unless there's an inquiry. You know, we so readily accept thoughts that do not serve our well-being. Why? Why don't we question them? I use an example in the book about if, if somebody was a trespasser on your property, you wouldn't just say, oh, hey, come on in, help yourself to whatever you want. You would say, what are you doing here? Get off my property. Negative thoughts are trespassers that we allow to remain in our minds. Why don't we say, you don't belong here. You do not serve my well-being. You don't have my best interest in, at heart. I'm going to release you or replace you with something that does. So when you talk about releasing Aura, um, how, how, how would you recommend we do that? Because that, I think people, you know, that sounds um, nice, let's release those thoughts. But boy, sometimes that's really hard. And it's not maybe in as simple um, of a decision as, well, I'm just going to release that right now. Well, it's not just release and boom, it's gone. Although, you know, some people might claim that they, that it's that simple and easy for them. And this is a very personal process, but I've, I've got a questioning method intact here. These are seven questions to go through so that you can actually question the veracity or the validity of the negative and fear-based thoughts that you have. And I also go into being the observer as opposed to the reactor. When you are the observer as if you're standing outside of yourself like a witness, you can look at yourself and the discomfort that you're feeling at the effect of a negative thought. So yes, it might sound simplistic to say, oh, just let it go. But like anything else, it's a discipline. It's a process. You don't just say, I want to diet and lose, you know, 10 pounds in one day. You, it is a process. It's a day by day commitment and it's a process. 
That's right. And I think that's uh, very key in understanding, uh, d- you know, growth and spiritual development. And it is, like you said, it is a process. And it, I, I always find that, you know, once you start to see um, over the course of time, you can see how things shift. And that's a really beautiful experience, too. And Kim, I, I would just jump in and say, too, for the listening audience, to have patience. Patience is is a big key to this and to trust how you're feeling, to to look at those thoughts. And, you know, one of the sayings you were talking or uh, as I like to say is I don't allow people to walk through my mind with their dirty shoes. Right. And even energetically taking on other people's energy from a metaphysical standpoint, not only just taking on their thoughts, but we can take on as empaths, we can take on other energy. And what, what I like to teach is am I thinking this way or am I thinking other people's thoughts and what they're, you know, projecting onto me or am I feeling this way? Or am I feeling the way somebody else does? Absolutely. And again, Mark, that's the questioning process. If we don't have a if we don't have a dialogue, an active questioning dialogue with ourselves, we're not going to get those answers. Yeah, and, and it's patience. We're on such an on demand society now. We want it, you know, like yesterday. And to be patient with yourself. So, um, Aura, as far as the book, where can people find you? I want to make sure to point them in the right direction. Amazon Thank website. You. Yes. It, the book is out nationwide. It's all, you can order it on all the public, all the uh, public book outlets, uh, Barnes and Noble, Amazon. You can go into your local bookstores, order them if they don't have them. It's out. It's out nationwide. Okay. Awesome. And how, how long was this labor of love for you to get this book published? I'd say the total beginning of the idea, well, the gestation period where I was really, you know, it was, it was percolating and growing, I'd say in about two and a half years. Okay. And that thought of writing the book, again, we're talking about thoughts <laughs> right. and we're going to be going, we're going to be going to break here shortly. Uh, but I think it'd be awesome to do a demonstration for the listening audience when we come back and get into the last section of the show. But that thought of even just writing a book started somewhere and here you are two years later and you've brought your, you know, your thoughts into reality. And I always say that things are born twice, once in your mind, second into reality. So uh, with that, there's the music. Uh, we have our special guest, Aura Nodrick, uh, talking about thoughts in her new book, We're going to take a two-minute break, and when we come back, we're going to do a little demonstration for the listening audience of how to – the how-to on our thoughts and what that all means. So stay with us. You're listening to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Old Times Radio, the voice of consciousness. The Real Conscious Connection. Old Times Radio. IOM FM. Come heal yourself. What is healing? Healing is nothing but connecting with your all-knowing higher self that already has solutions to all your problems and is always there to guide you. Through this show, we help you to connect with that you are and tap into that innate potential you have to transform your life and fly high. Please join me, your host Monica Goyal, every Sunday, 7 p.m. Pacific. Namaste. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. One planet, 7.3 billion people. Only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, 
Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. Dr. Kevin here, and I want to invite you every Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, to join me on The Dr. Kevin Show, where we have a diversity of guests who help you step outside the box, behind the curtain, and see what a load of crap is going on in the world today so you have more information with which to make better decisions. We'll see you there. Namaste. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. And welcome back, inspired listeners, to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim and our special guest, Aura Nadrich. Aura, before we went uh, on break, we were talking about, uh, well, negative thinking for one, but then also perhaps walking us through how to correct that. Um, we had a, uh, a one of our listeners write in and says, she says that she um, has trouble uh, sleeping at night sometimes. She's lying there in bed awake and at night by herself with fearful um, and negative thoughts uh, around money. Uh, I believe she's also in the entertainment industry. So, um, you know, when she's going to get her next job, is she going to have enough money, things like that. Um, and I, I know that so, you know, that's a prime time for people to let their minds be overcome with that kind of thinking. Right. So, yeah. Yes. Well, first of all, a lot of our anxiety and a lot of our worries, and yes, nighttime, especially before you go to bed, a lot of things you're you're reflecting on the day and a lot of the things that get carried over from that do get carried over into the nighttime. And one of the things I want to say just right off the top is that being in present time awareness, which is what mindfulness is, is being in the moment that you are in. And one could say, well, I am in the moment and I'm feeling anxious about the future. Well, really, you're not. You're in the future. And that's why you're feeling anxious, because you're thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow, which isn't has yet happened. Or you're thinking about yesterday, what has already happened. And one of the mindfulness meditations that I like to do is, is really to help people be in the present moment, in the moment of now. And for somebody like your, your, uh, the person that proposed that question to you is that I would walk her through a meditation of being present and have a focus meditation so that she could put her focus and attention and awareness on something like her breath and also a visual meditation so that she could envision the thought leaving her mind. So I don't know if that's something you want me to walk you through or to explain, but those are the types of meditations that are the most helpful when you're in that state because she clearly is not in the moment. She's in the future. And what we really, the goal that we want to reach in our lives is to be in the present moment of every moment of our lives. And when we're in the present moment, we are in the moment with acceptance and non-judgment. And if even you could just sit quietly somewhere and just be with your eyes closed, get comfortable, maybe focus on your breathing, taking a deep breath in, letting it go. Taking a breath in, letting it go, and allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to be in the present moment of now, of just being in the moment that you're experiencing and that you're alive in, which is right now, which is the most real moment there is. And with this practice and with this discipline, again, of the mind, you start to let those things go. They don't stop, they don't keep occupying your mind. And with that practice, you start to surrender to what it feels like to be in the present moment where the sky isn't falling. You haven't been told you don't have that job. You don't 
you don't look at a bank account that says it's empty. You're in the moment of now where you can start to feel relaxed and you can start again focusing on your breath or feeling the sensations in your body and then take it into a visualization where something like this where she's worried about her future finances take a thought like I'm not going to be okay with my finances and I want you to take that thought and I want you to place that thought in the palm of your hand and see it manifest into a bird or a butterfly. And I want you to open your hand as wide as you possibly can and let it go. Let that bird that carries that thought or a butterfly that carries that thought go. Release it out into the sky, into the heavens, and just watch it go further and further away from your vision until it's gone. And now it's not there anymore in your mind. Things like that before you go to sleep, visualizations, focusing on your breath that can become what your present state of mind is in right now. And if you can try that before you go to bed, lay down, get comfortable, feel the comfort of your bed, Feel the comfort of your sheets. What does that feel like? What does it smell like? Touch your hand over your sheets, over your blanket. These are the ways we become so much more cognizant of being in the present. And by being in the present, we're not going to be as prone to moving out of the present moment into a moment that has not happened yet. We are meant to be in the moment that is right now. And this, again, is what mindfulness is. It's being in the present moment of now. I absolutely love that meditation you just did. As you were um, walking us through that, I had my hands. <laughs> I could see the bird. It was That was really nice. Thank you. And yeah, that was great. Thank you for sharing that with us because I think people need tools and tips like that, that they can, it's easy to remember that they can do themselves um, and that they can use when, when they need it. So that was really nice. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what, Kim, I also want to add to that, that for the person that sent that to you is when we become again, the observer and not the reactor to our thoughts, when a thought comes up that is full of worry, when you're not in a meditation, you know, state, you can say to yourself to bring yourself back into the moment of now, oh, there there I go again. I'm in the future. I'm not in the moment. I'm not being in the present moment of right now. So, you know, these little reminders can keep us present in the moment of what is right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or as I like yeah. to say, the, the what-if world. <laughs> the what-ifs, yeah. Or one of the chapters in my book is the something to worry about thoughts. <gasps> Oh, that's great. (laughs) (laughs) You know, somebody just said to me recently who was with me, she said, oh, you know, God, I haven't been worrying. It's been about like three hours and I haven't had a worried thought. There must be something wrong. (laughs) You know, she says, I'm so used to having worried thoughts that suddenly I haven't. She goes, God, can you imagine? I haven't worried for a couple of hours. I'm I'm, that's that's I'm not used to that. (laughs) We were uh, we were watching a show yesterday, um, the new Steven Spielberg, The Bridge of Spies with Tom mm-hmm, Hanks. Mm-hmm. And every time Tom Hanks would ask him a question of this uh, Russian spy, are you worried? And he would say, would it help? <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. Exactly. It, all throughout the movie, would it help? Would it help? So I told my wife I'm going to start saying that, would it help? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's so good. I like that. Yeah. You know, it's basically we've got to – it's it's just up. Dating, you know, we update our computers, we got to update our thinking process, you know, we got to realize that worrying and all of that stuff does not serve our well being. So we have to know what to do with it when it comes up. You also said to um, or you t- or you talk about um, our inner circle and recognizing how the negativity of others can affect our own thoughts. Talk to us a little bit about that because so many of us aren't mindful of who we surround ourselves with. Absolutely, and I think that again, that's another discipline and another practice that 
if you're around people, I mean, I know there's that concept of toxicity, you know, that seems a little extreme for me. If you're around people that you really feel drained around them or feel tired when you leave their company, that's an indication that they're on an energetic level, that there's something out of balance, do you know? So I think it's important to, again, be mindful about how we feel in the presence of others and equally how they feel in the presence of us. So if you're in the company of people where you don't feel you're able to be your authentic self, and keep in mind, nobody does this to us. We allow it to happen. So either we have to really take our space um, being authentically who we are in the environment of other people, or we have to really maybe, you know, reevaluate if we're around people that don't support our well-being, just like our negative thoughts. You know, are we, are we around people that do speak negatively, that aren't supportive of who we are and who we're evolving? You know that saying, you know, you can't be a hero in your hometown. We are evolving daily. Who we were yesterday might not be who we are tomorrow. We are changing and we want to be around people that are embracing and supporting who we are becoming. Do you know, that's really important. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, I, I uh, was in conversation with someone recently who was talking about she uh, wanting to correct um, her negative thinking. And she was talking about some of, in that same conversation, talking about some of the people that she was around and these people weren't making good choices for themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know that she was making that connection between the people that she surrounded herself with and the negative thoughts that she was having. And uh, then I saw, you know, your reference to the importance of being mindful of that. And it's, it's a very uh, important thing to be aware of, because it does affect us. It does. It does. And that awareness, again, you know, paying attention to, you know, your thoughts, as also Mark was saying, it's true, your thoughts create your feelings, create your behavior, create your reality. It's all connected. All those dots are connected. So if you're Mm -hmm. feeling that you're in the presence of, you know, certainly acknowledge your own negativity. That's what says who is about. It's about owning your thoughts and coming to understand them, but absolutely be aware and as mindful about other people that are around you and what thoughts they hold and express. That's right. And uh, we are going to our last break already of the show. So stay with us. We'll be back with more nature as we talk about our thoughts. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. I'm Maggie Chula. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. Join us every week here on Om Times Radio for Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are are the the inspired inspired and the inspiration. inspiration. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.omtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Have 
you've been searching for a perspective beyond the mainstream, check it out. Join your hosts, Yelito Pascual and Diana Gold Holland, on Share International Radio for thought provoking views behind the news. Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Ohm Times Radio. You can also find us at shareontheairradio.org. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back, inspired listeners, as we speak today with our special guest, Aura Nadrich. Aura, we've been talking a lot about negative thoughts and negative thinking, and also um, the importance of meditation, too, and how that can help us with those thoughts. Um, I had, there was a question. Really, there was a question that came through uh, from one of our listeners that said that he enjoys meditation. He um, he knows the benefits of it, but sometimes it feels like a chore. Mm -hmm. Right. I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot. That's very common. And then uh, then what people sometimes do is they berate themselves for feeling that way. Another thing is that people assume that when they're meditating, that their thoughts are just automatically going to turn off. And that's not the case. So uh, I, I want to just uh, mention a blog that I wrote for the Huffington Post called Your Morning Cup of Tea or Coffee Can Be Your Meditation. And I wrote it because I wanted people to know that they can turn just about anything into a meditation. I'm not saying that sitting quietly in a meditative you know, position is not equally important. Important it is, but a lot of the times I hear, I don't have time to meditate. So why I wrote that blog is that I wanted people to know that if there's something that we each do daily, or most of us do, and that is that we drink a cup of tea or coffee or whatever to sit quietly and not rush through that process. If you can sit quietly, be present. I talked about mindfulness, being in the present moment with what you're experiencing and taste it and smell it and mm-hmm. feel it. And allow yourself to be in the experience of what you're doing so that people who feel that something's a chore, how about doing something that's not a chore and being mindful and meditative about it? So again, I'm a big supporter of actually meditating and sitting quietly and meditating. For, but for those that feel they can't or those that feel it's a chore, I want you to take whatever you're doing. And sit with it or be with it very mindfully. It could be a walk. There's mind, there's mindfulness meditation walks, you know, not rushing through anything you're doing and letting all your senses be alive and present in the experience. Right. Oh, that is great. I, I love that. Cause yeah, sometimes people feel like, oh, you know, I don't, oh, do I have to sit down, you know, and light the candle and, you know, (laughs) make a big deal of it. No, I also say, even if you can sit for 10 minutes, give yourself, I mean, I'll even, I feel like I'm reducing it to nothing, but even if you can give yourself five or 10 minutes a day, let's take meditation out of the equation and not even call it that you're meditating. Sit quietly for 10 minutes and just be, just let yourself focus on your breath. If you want something to focus on, close your eyes, sit quietly And just be you, be still, be quiet. That's a form of meditation. Isn't that the truth? I love that. You don't have to go through a major ritual. You can just be you. No, no. Be still. Be with the stillness, you know, if you can. And if your mind's active, allow for it. But giving yourself that, what I, what I encourage is not to try and skip too much time. Because if you start to think it's a chore, guess what that, ha- what happens? That becomes your thought. Oh, meditation is a chore. You see? Yes. Back to the thought again. Right. <laughs> right. The self, and it becomes the self-fulfilled prophecy. Oh, meditation is a chore. I don't really want to do it. And we don't uh, want more chores. No, we don't. And it doesn't have to be a chore. You know, bring yourself to whatever gives you pleasure and make that your meditation. Do you know what I mean? It's like make it something that you enjoy, whether it's a nice walk or it's drinking your tea 
or it's planting in your garden or it's, you know, doing slow stretching exercises on the floor or it's cooking or baking, whatever, turn that into a meditation, but be present with what you're doing. Don't rush and let your senses be alive. Smell it, feel it, touch it, listen to it. That becomes meditation. And very similar to the tea concept that you're talking about, um, conscious eating. A lot of us yes. don't, you know, yes. I, I, I actually use that as part of my meditation sometimes. Uh, one, when I'm trying to lose weight, but two, just being conscious of the food that I'm putting into my body. And very similar to what you're saying uh, as far as taste it, feel the energy because everything has energy. Yes. Uh, whether you're eating an apple and it, it has, you know, uh, it's alive, it has energy. I know that sounds kind of weird no, to absolutely. say, you know, that an apple is alive, but conscious eating and slowly chewing your food and, and, and taking that in. And that's a, that's a big one because we, we, we all have to eat every day, right? Absolutely, Mark. I'm so glad you brought that up. Conscious eating, mindful eating is a big one. That's great. It helps with just, you know, eating in a healthy, non-rushed, digesting your food, but it also really helps with dieting. The whole relationship that you have with food, do you know, do I want to eat this? Why do I want the, why do I want to eat this? Mm -hmm. And how am I, and how am I eating it? Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's such a big, you know, food in, in today's society is, you know, with the obesity rates and everything that were, you know, the manufactured uh, food. I mean, it's just, it's very important to, to be conscious of what you're putting into your body as well. Cause I, I think food and the energy also, in my humble opinion, also impacts how you feel, which then in turn generates some of those thoughts that you've been talking about the entire Absolutely, hour. Yes. And, and please, I want your listeners to know, start, be kind to yourself in this process. It's a daily practice. Be kind in the process of it, of learning and growing. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't judge yourself. You know, mindfulness, again, be in the moment with present awareness and non-judgment. And let's throw in some love in there, okay? Speaking of which, I'm glad that's a nice introduction because <laughs> I, I she was, said the love word. Well, yeah, you did. Um, cause the name of my practice is love first, but I was going to say that, um, I was noticing your blogs on your website. So I want to encourage the listeners to go to auranadrich.com. We've got all of Aura's, um, contact information on Facebook and social media, but you've certainly written some interesting blogs and one of them is my mindfulness, and love and sex. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Kim. Yes, I have, which is an interesting, I've also done workshops. I've done the love, uh, the mindfulness, love and sex workshop. And, you know, it was really interesting for people because just to put all those in one, one sentence together mm -hmm. is, is re and it's really very powerful because yes, everything we do about helping our relationships, helping whether that it's, it's personal, sexual, whatever, the intimacy, mindfulness and intimacy, you know, exploring that. What does that mean? Our way of communicating to one another mindfully, which enhances our intimacy. Mm -hmm. So very important. There's mindfulness in everything that we do. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. every day, you know, try again, going back to try and be in the moment. And the more you're in the moment, the more you're in the present, you're going to start to feel when you go out of it. You're like, oh, there I go. Oops, going in the future, going back into yesterday. Let me bring myself back into the moment that is right now. And that's why they call, you know, today the gift, you know, the present, as they say. So there's a lot of truth in that, you know, not getting off into the what if world or what I should have done or, you know, no. what, other, what other people are thinking. So it's, you know, it's very important to watch your thoughts because your thoughts really do are really the first you know, the starting point of, of how you're going to, you know, talk and behave and the things that you're going to do in life. And um, one more time uh, for our listening audience, uh, let them know where they can find you and any upcoming workshops that you have. Great. Um, thank you. Well, they can find me on all social media with my name, uh, Aura Nadrich. What I have coming up uh, very soon is I'm going to be at the Conscious Life Expo. Uh, LAX Hilton, uh, February 19th to the 21st. Come visit me. I have a booth there. I'm also doing a workshop and I'm going to be doing a lecture. And the workshop is going to be great because I'm going to be, you know, working with people with the says who method. So they're going to get actual experience with the method. So it's going to be very exciting. And I uh, will be doing a bi-monthly 
uh, Mindfulness Matters series at a new beautiful meditation studio that just opened up in Los Angeles called The Den Meditation. So please go on their app and check their schedule. And just a lot more coming up. So just adding to that busyness that you uh, opened the show up with, <laughs> just busy, busy, busy. But that's good because that means that you're alive and that you're out there making a change uh, in people. You're making a change in the world. Being on Inspired Living with Mark and Kim today is helping to make a change, and that's what we're all about, right, as far as the spiritual path and uh, what we're all trying to do. I always say it takes a village, uh, and there's enough work uh, and enough people out there that are looking and need help. And so check Aura out. Check her we- her website out. Go to her workshop, stop by the uh, expo and, and meet her in person and get an autographed book. And Or it's just been a pleasure having you on the show. I'd love to have you back uh, oh, thank later you so in much. the year. Oh, thank you so much, Kim and Mark. This has been wonderful. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. And again, I know that there's a lot of interest in meditation and our thought process and visualization and manifestation. And uh, we look forward to having you back on Inspired Living here on Home Times Radio. And with that, we uh, are going to announce next week's uh, special guest is we have a prof- our first professional athlete that's going to uh, be on Inspired Living uh, with Mark and Kim, uh, Brian Wilson, who is a professional uh baseball player pitcher he played for uh, both the Giants and the Dodgers and we're going to be talking about spirituality in pro sports we're going to be talking about visualization manifestation and what it's like to be a pro at that top level and how to get through you know uh, all of those challenges of spirituality in the uh, professional arena so again thanks for joining us today here on Inspired Living with Mark and Thank Kim you. we'll see you have again have a great week next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. Until then, be kind, be caring, be compassionate. Namaste. Namaste.